Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Today I want to make a comparison between traditional wooden raised beds and bottomless planters. Now I used to use wooden raised beds a fair amount in my old place, but I've moved on from that to preferring bottomless planters. And it's not so much that I have a problem with wooden raised beds in theory, it's just that in practice they tend to be a little bit uh, expensive or labor intensive to build and maintain and they also rot, which was my problem with my last batch of raised beds. And so I've moved on to the bottomless planters here, but before I say anything else, I don't want to trash somebody else's garden solutions. If you've had good luck with raised beds, there's good reason for that. And first I want to start off by listing the reasons why raised beds do work and are great solutions for the garden. So the first advantage of gardening with a raised bed comes down to what is your underlying soil right now? What have you got in the garden to work with? And here on the island I have a dense, heavy, rich soil which is an advantage in a lot of ways, but if you have plants that demand a lighter soil to get a good start, this isn't the soil for you. Now no matter what your underlying soil condition is, whether it's rocky, sandy, uh, dense like this, compacted, if you can build your own raised bed on top of it, you can make a good environment for young plants. So you fill that with a loose, light, well-drained soil, which is in general what young plants like to have to be an advantage to their roots. Also that outside frame creates a barrier to weeds. Uh, raised beds also warm up the soil a little bit earlier in the season so you can get a faster start. They look good, which is fantastic, and also they raise the height of the garden to where it's more useful for a lot of gardeners. Now that last one is a little debatable because the truth is if you have a raised bed that's only six inches or a foot above the ground, there's still gonna be some bending, kneeling, or sitting involved. Uh, some people raise their beds up to three feet and that's fine, so you get a nice high working surface, but that's a lot of soil to put into a raised bed. Which leads me right into a discussion on bottomless planters, which share many of the advantages of raised beds. But I like the form factor an awful lot more. I like that I can choose the right size and shape of planter to fit my space. I can choose the finish, so this one's plastic, but you can certainly use terracotta or stone for a more ornamental effect. And of course, I don't have to deal with the maintenance or rot that's related to wooden planters. So I saw a video well received on this on YouTube by Bunny Guinness recently, and I will link that one below the video because I think she does a great job of explaining how this works well for plants that wouldn't per perform excellently in a planter alone, but these larger plants will root their root down below through the bottom of the pot and uh, maintain their high performance. Now, obviously she's not the first person to come up with this concept. It's been around for a long time. I made a video on this a couple of years ago where I show you how to do this with bottomless pots in my tomato greenhouse and had good yield there. But also the cannabis guys have been into this for years. Uh, so this is hardly a new idea, but the one difference I will point out between what I did here with my plastic pot and what Bunny Guinness did is she sought out the entire bottom of her pot. What I did was I just took this planter here and I used a hole saw like this to remove discs of plastic from the bottom. And I did that in six or eight spaces across the bottom of this planter here, so that when the rose reached the bottom of the pot, it just poked its roots down through the bottom and anchored firmly into the soil below. When we decided to reimagine how we were going to keep our stock plants for our roses for cuttings, we came across this modified version of the bottomless planter, which I think you'll recognize as the tires of cars. Now, I'm sure you'll appreciate this, at least if not for your own garden, at least for our garden. By the way, this is Pompanella doing quite nicely for uh, November above the 49th parallel. And it gave us the advantage of having uh, a cheap, uh, durable protection around our roses, a place to put an extra layer of soil to give the young roots a place to establish a little better before they drop down into the soil below, a nice place to label our plants, and a great way to keep the grass and weeds out from our roses that is easy for us to mow around. It acts as a sort of a bumper on the ride-on mower, and it is a uh, fantastic for string trimming around. So when we want to make the place a little more presentable for a tour, we just go ahead and string trim around all of these. And this was a very 
inexpensive way for us to reestablish all the roses. I think we're up to, oh, 150 of them now. So it was a nice inexpensive way of getting these relocated from a, a crowded old stock field into a new place for our roses. Final thoughts on bottomless containers and raised beds. Well, it kind of acknowledges the nature of raised bed gardening as a hybrid between container gardening and in-ground gardening with some of the advantages of both. Having that raised uh, engineered area of soil and then having the overflow where the roots can escape down below and gather additional moisture and nutrients and maintain stability of moisture and temperature uh, longer throughout the season. Uh, I hope that answered some of your questions on a comparison between these two methods and if you have any other questions or comments please leave those below the video. Thanks for watching.